This is a great project for if you have any old NXT or any old EV3 boxes. Um, like myself, I'm a teacher, I have a whole whack -a load of old school NXT and EV3 boxes, and now that LEGO Mindsters be defunct for many, many years, um, this is what I've done as a way of continuing to build out the robotics uh, education for students using either CircuitPython as a platform or Arduino as a platform. Uh, so let's go get started. So let's get to it. Uh, you're going to need a few things for this project. Uh, the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need one of my uh, 3D printed boards here. I've got a Metro M4, but an Arduino also fits on top. It's got a half uh, breadboard, uh, and then it's attached to one of these pins uh, that fits well. I'm going to have all these 3D printed files down below. I would suggest you have some sort of alternative server power delivery. Um, this is what I have set up here. It's got a little UBEC. I've got a video down below, but effectively this will allow you to power up to eight servos in your project. You're going to need a couple different uh, battery mounts. Uh, again, I have these uh, down below. They're effectively a 9 by 13 frame. You're going to need a couple rotational servos. In my classroom, all the black ones are uh, rotational, whereas all the red ones are positional. This just allows you to take any standard servo and mesh it out to a, a Technic axle. The last thing you're going to need is a couple battery packs. I've got uh, a 9-volt battery pack here and then a 6-volt battery pack here as well, or four times AA and six times AA. This is the one I use for the microcontroller. This is the one that I use for the servo power. And of course, the last thing you need is one of your old school EV3 or NXT kits. Um, I made this whole uh, kit because what I've realized is that the EV3s are super old uh, and teachers are looking for a way to be able to get high quality robotics uh, tools. I like the Technic as a build platform because it's super fast for robotics, um, but the EV3 is not great because you can't use any uh, standard points. So this allows me to uh, create a rover out of non-EV3 parts. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my servo mount here and I am going to load it up with a bunch of black pins here. The more black pins you put in here, the better because it makes it less likely for your servo to fall off. Sometimes you can push in the bottom of the table and that helps you fit it in. Uh, and then on this one, I'm actually going to run the cable facing forwards, and the cable facing out this way, so that I can mount up on this side of the microcontroller. Now, this is key because our wheel output's actually gonna go here eventually. And we need our power output facing away because we're gonna put a big brick here. So if you put this barrel jack on this side, you will not be able to plug anything into power. So let's do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna make sure that my points are mirrored. So I'm gonna make sure that both of my cables are running backwards here. I'm gonna put another four pins in. I like to give it a little push on the table just to make sure all my pins are seated and make sure that they are running mirrored to each other. That's looking pretty good. Oh, my board has fallen off. All right, so we're ready to keep going. Now on one side, I'm gonna throw in a three length axle. And I'm gonna put another three length axle on the other side. You may find that pushing it on the table helps you get a little bit more force to be able to get those axles all the way in. You also take a, a small hammer, anything like that would work. Now, next to this, we're gonna put on a 24 tooth gear on top of that point. And we're gonna run our wheels out the back here. So I'm gonna grab two six length axles, run them in on this side to the second last hole. Again, in the second last hole, we're going to throw another 24 tooth on that for both sides. Okay. And then we need some way to make sure this doesn't fall off. So to do that, we're going to use one of these kind of angled brackets and uh, a couple three-length 
beams. So I'm going to throw in a cross connector. Actually, on this one, I'm going to do two black. Oh, no, I need to do two three length beams here. Sorry, not cross connector. Three length. Run our three length hole like so. And then we can mount it on so that it mounts into our frame like that. We'll do the same thing on the other side. I guess technically you don't need a three length on the top part. You only need a black hole on the top part. Run our three length beam through again. Oh, I built that one backwards. I'll run it through on this side actually. Run it through so that we're not through the center point. Click in and that should hold our wheel on nice. Now let's get two wheels on. The wheel you choose doesn't really matter. I'm gonna choose this wheel. Now, before we mount this, we need another three length beam because if we mount this wheel on, you're gonna find that it's just going to rub against your surface. So we're gonna grab a couple black and a couple blue with an axle connectors. We're gonna throw the axle connector side on this the very end as well as our other point and throw our three length beam on. And then this tire has a shallow side and a deep side. I'm gonna throw the shallow side against the robot because what that allows me to do is now you notice there's just enough clearance that this three wheel provides that this wheel is not actually gonna scrub against this joint. And now we should have a nice point. You're welcome to put a bushing on this if you think that this might come off. I generally do. Makes life a little easier. We'll repeat the same thing on this side. And put in another blue, another black, a three length beam. Grab yourself another tire, pop it on, and one more bushing, in like so. And that's the first part set up. We've got our wheels ready to rock. Uh, the next task for us is to get our battery packs set up. So I'm actually gonna mount the batteries inside now. I'm gonna take one, slide it through, make sure that the cable runs out this side. I'm gonna throw on another couple pins. Keep this together. I'm gonna throw a couple in the middle here too, just to get us a really nice stable connection. I'm gonna sandwich my other battery pack on top. And again, make sure that our points line up like so. And then sandwich these two together. So I have a nice strong battery box. It's not gonna be coming undone on me here. Uh, next thing I'm gonna, gonna load up our uh, pins here so that we can connect it to this far side. Now the one thing you wanna make sure is that on my design, some of these pins don't actually line up because sometimes people like to do different designs here. So I'm gonna put one, two, three on this side and one, two, three on this side. I'm gonna skip that middle hole. Again, you might find that pushing this thing down on a table helps you seat those pins properly. And I'm gonna make sure that I line this, oh, that one just got crushed. I'm just gonna take that one out. And then I'm gonna line it up so that we mount our point on. Now we need some way of stopping this thing from falling to the ground. So for that, I'm gonna use a ball caster. And on this ball caster, I'm gonna take one of these 90 degree connectors, push it in like so, push another one up on the top, I got a little sub-assembly here. I'm gonna mount this one in the middle up top so that we've got our joints sliding around, ready to go. Uh, now, the last thing we need for a robot is our servo power delivery module. This is gonna allow us to get power to our servos. 
you want to make sure that your power output is on the same side as the outputs for your battery cables. So I'm going to go ahead and throw four pins in here. And then slide it in up top like so. Just push mine off. There we go. And then let's wire everything up. So I'm going to grab my 9-volt battery pack, connect that to my servo power delivery board, grab the 6-volt battery pack, connect that to my metro board. And on my servos, I'm going to route this up through the middle. And then you can choose yourself a servo port. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I connect my servo cable to the servo side here, like so. I'm going to choose port 2. And then same thing, connect it in, and then I need to actually connect my servos. So I'm going to do a common ground on this far side. You can choose any ground port you want on the far side. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see that. You can choose any ground port connected back to your common ground on your Metro controller board. I'm going to choose my common ground back there. And then you can choose any digital pins you want. I'm going to choose digital zero. Actually, sorry, because I have it on two and three, it doesn't really matter. But just for my own sanity, I'm going to choose digital two and three, just so that it's easy so that I know where my servos line up to. Again, that doesn't actually matter, but it's a little neater for wiring. And the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this thing upside down, grab myself a little H-frame, throw in some extra pins like so. And this will just give us a little bit of extra resiliency on the bottom, where I'm going to connect a few points across just to get us a little extra support to stop our unit from falling apart on us. And there we go. Oh, my board has come undone here for my hot glue. All right, and that's it. That is your rover all finished and uh, ready to rock. I hope you found that useful and best of luck on your next robotics project.